dear audience assalamu alaikum i am professor shamsud jaman professor of pathology i welcome all in today's sixth lecture on hematology today's topic is leukemia now come to leukemia day 1 of leukemia lecture first come to what is leukemia neoplastic proliferation of hemopoietic stem cell so, neoplastic proliferation of hemopoietic stem cell with appearance of immature cell with appearance of immature cell in peripheral blood in peripheral blood with or without. So, neoplastic proliferation of hemopoietic stem cell with appearance of immature cell are formed in peripheral blood with or without infiltration in other organ, in other organ or tissue is called leukemia. So, neoplastic proliferation of hemopoietic stem cell with appearance of immature cell in peripheral blood with or without infiltration in other organ or tissue is called leukemia. Dear audience, this is the medullary cavity and this is the bone and this is the blood. By definition, the bone marrow contains hemopoietic stem cell, stem cell, hemopoietic stem cell in bone marrow. So, this is the cancer or this is the neoplasm of the hemopoietic stem cell in the bone marrow. So, this is the cancer of hemopoietic stem cell of the bone marrow. So, stem cell here, stem cell. So, this is stem cell cancer. So, neoplastic proliferation of this stem cell and with appearance of immature form and from the bone immature cell comes in blood, immature cell comes in blood and this immature cell that comes from bone marrow in blood or that remains within the bone marrow, these are called leukemic cell. So, we will get leukemic cell in peripheral blood and this leukemic cell may infiltrate, may infiltrate, may infiltrate or may not or may not infiltrate other organ or tissue. So, it is the cancer of the hemopoietic stem cell in bone marrow from due to cancer immature cell comes in blood and this immature cell or this leukemic cell may infiltrate other organ or tissue. Either it infiltrate or it does not infiltrate, it is called leukemia by definition. Now, come to if organ or tissue is infiltrated by leukemic cell, what are the organs may be infiltrated? Organs may be infiltrated. organs may be infiltrated by leukemic cell in leukemia. What are the organs? The organs may be lymph node, organ may be spleen, organ may be liver. Dear audience, you know in our normal physiological condition, there is RBC, WC and platelet as the formed elements of blood 
and in normal individual there is no immature form of rbc there is no immature form of wc in the blood so we can say normally in our blood there is no immature cell there is no blood cell there is no immature cell but in leukemia there is immature cell in the peripheral blood now come to how many percentages of immature cell or leukemic cell is required in the peripheral blood or in the bone marrow to declare it is a case of leukemia so percentages of immature cells so percentage of immature cell in bone marrow or in blood in leukemia the percentage of immature cell in the bone marrow or in the blood it should be more than more than 15 percent if more than 15 percent immature cells in found in bone marrow or in the blood it is called leukemia dear audience now come to how can we how can we classify leukemia now come to classification of leukemia leukemia may be classified as based on based on clinical course and prognosis then it can be classified based on cell lineage involved based on cell lineage involvement based on cell lineage involvement and another classification france american and british classification fab classification france america british classification classification of acute leukemia so we can classify leukemia based on clinical course and prognosis based on cell lineage involvement and lastly france america british classification of acute leukemia first come to based on clinical course and prognosis based on clinical course and prognosis and prognosis it may be acute leukemia it may be acute leukemia in acute leukemia the clinical course is short and prognosis is worse so short clinical course and worse prognosis then chronic leukemia chronic leukemia the clinical course is long and prognosis is better long clinical course and better prognosis so this is on the basis of clinical course and prognosis now come to based on cell lineage involvement based on cell lineage involvement it may be myeloid leukemia 
myeloid leukemia myeloid leukemia is two types one is acute myeloid leukemia or it is called acute myeloblastic leukemia acute myeloblastic leukemia and abbreviation of acute myeloblastic leukemia or acute myeloleukemia AML AML another is chronic myeloid leukemia chronic myeloid leukemia and it is also called chronic granulocytic leukemia chronic granulocytic briefly or abbreviation CML or it is also called chronic granulocytic leukemia chronic granulocytic leukemia CGL Now come to this is myeloid leukemia, another is lymphoid leukemia. So on the basis of cell lineage involvement, one is myeloid leukemia, another is lymphoid leukemia. Lymphoid leukemia. Lymphoid leukemia is two types. One is acute lymphoid leukemia or it is called acute lymphoblastic leukemia acute lymphoblastic leukemia abbreviation is ALL acute lymphoblastic leukemia another is chronic lymphoid leukemia or chronic lymphocytic leukemia. So another is chronic lymphoid leukemia or chronic lymphocytic leukemia. It is abbreviated as CLL. So these are the on the basis of cell lineage involvement. Now come to FAB classification. Friends America British class British classification of acute leukemia FAB classification Dear audience one thing is important I have told you if it is bone marrow this is the bone medullary cavity containing the uh, hemopoietic stem cell hemopoietic stem cell Leukemia is the cancer of hemopoietic stem cell and you know from the hemopoietic stem cell we get RBC, we get WBC, we get platelet. So we get RBC, WBC platelet from the hemopoietic stem cell. If there is cancer of hemopoietic stem cell, cancer should be cancer or leukemia should be leukemia of RBC series, leukemia of WBC series and leukemia of platelet also as RBC, WBC platelet all are derived from the hemopoietic stem cell as leukemia is nothing but the cancer of hemopoietic stem cell so there should have leukemia of RBC, leukemia of WBC, leukemia of platelet but up to this classification we got leukemia of lymphoid series, leukemia of uh, myeloid series but no leukemia of RBC, no leukemia platelet up to this classification. So if we go through the FAP classification, we can get leukemia of RBC and leukemia of platelet also. Now come to FAP classification. It is broadly two types, acute myeloblastic leukemia, acute myeloblastic leukemia and another is acute lymphoblastic leukemia lymphoblastic leukemia so broadly acute myeloblastic leukemia and acute lymphoblastic leukemia now come to 
acute myeloblastic leukemia acute myeloblastic leukemia dear audience acute myeloblastic leukemia in fib classification is divided as seven divided as seven divided as seven types divided as seven types number one is called m1 acute myeloblastic leukemia it is called acute myeloblastic leukemia without maturation acute myeloblastic leukemia without maturation without maturation what it means in this type of m1 acute myeloblastic leukemia without maturation the blood cells that you got a least number or a few number of blood cells are myeloperoxidase positive and most of the blood cells are not myeloperoxidase positive so a few number blood cells are milo paroxidase positive in case of m1 it is called acute myeloblastic leukemia without mesuration now come to m2 m2 it is called acute myeloblastic leukemia with mesuration So it is acute myeloblastic leukemia with maceration. What it says in this type, in this type, majority, majority of blood cells, blood cells, or majority of immature blood cells are myeloperoxidase positive. Paroxidase positive. Dear audience, one thing is important. We know there is lymphoblast in case of lymphoblastic leukemia, there is myeloblast in case of myeloblastic leukemia. We can differentiate or we can identify a myeloblast or a lymphoblast under microscope after straining. And there is another tool to identify the myeloblast and lymphoblast or to differentiate myeloblast from lymphoblast. The tool is myeloperoxidase test the tool is myeloperoxidase test if 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 we put here myeloperoxidase and if we put here myeloblast and lymphoblast the myeloblast will be the myeloblast will be paroxidase positive and lymphoblast is not paroxidase positive so myeloblast is paroxidase positive lymphoblast is paroxidase negative so if we do myeloperoxidase test in case of acute myeloblastic leukemia without maceration a few of the blood cells become myeloperoxidase positive so it is called without maturation but in case of m2 most of the cells are myeloperoxidase positive so it is called acute myeloblastic leukemia with maceration m3 from hypergranular it is hypergranular hypergranular pro myelocytic pro myelocytic leukemia so hypergranular pro myelocytic leukemia in this type Dear audience, I have told you in case of leukemia, there is immature cell in peripheral blood. If most of the cells of immature cell in peripheral blood is promyelocyte, then it is called promyelocytic leukemia. Suppose you have got 30% immature cell in peripheral blood, 30% immature cell. If 
out of 30 percent image cell most of the cells are promyelocyte then it is called promyelocytic leukemia so in this type in this type in this type the cells the cells are promyelocyte in this type most of the cells most of the cells in this type most of the cells are promyelocyte and myelo and myeloperoxidase positive so in m3 it is called hypergranular promyelocytic leukemia in this type the most of the cells most of the image cells are promyelocyte and the cells are myeloperoxidase positive now come to m4 it is called myelomonocytic leukemia myelomonocytic leukemia myelomonocytic leukemia there are days in this type in this type in this type immature form of cells of both myeloid and monocyte lineage cell found what i tell in this type immature cells of both myeloid and monocytic lineage cell found so in this type the image cell that we get there is immature form of myeloid series and immature form of monocytic series this is called myelo monocytic leukemia now come to m5 this is called monocytic leukemia m5 is monocytic leukemia it is two types one is m 5a in this type we get blast cells in this type we get blast cell m5 means monocytic leukemia monocytic leukemia without maceration what it means it is definitely monocytic leukemia acute monocytic leukemia the blood cell that we found in m5a most of the cells are undifferentiated most of the cells are undifferentiated what else here a list number a list number cells are differentiated so these are the blood cells or monocytic series but a few number cells are differentiated as monoblast then m 5b m5b it is called monocytic leukemia monocytic leukemia monocytic leukemia with maturation or with differentiation monocytic leukemia with maturation or with differentiation or with differentiation so monocytic leukemia with differentiation or with maturation in this type in this type most of the cells are differentiated most of the cells are differentiated as monoblast 
as monoblast. So, in monocytic leukemia with differentiation, most of the cells are differentiated as monoblast. In addition, in addition, there is promonocyte, promonocyte, and monocyte found. So, dear audience, how can we differentiate M5A and M5B? M5A is monocytic leukemia without differentiation. Here, a few number cells are differentiated as monoblast, and there is no promonocyte and monocyte cell along with it. But in case of M5B, it is called a monocytic leukemia with differentiation. In this type, most of the cells are differentiated as monoblast. And in addition to this, there is promonocyte and monocyte. Then M6, it is called erythroleukemia. That is, it is the leukemia of RBC series. Erythroleukemia, that is, leukemia of RBC series. In this type, in this type, what we will get? In this type, we get more than 50 percent nucleated nucleated cells of bone marrow bone marrow are erythroblast are erythroblast erythroblast means these are the nucleated red cell and this is the initial stage of erythropoiesis there are dense in bone marrow if you consider bone marrow in, in the bone bone marrow you know there is a nucleated cells of wbg series nucleated cells of RBG series in the bone marrow. If more than 50 percent of the nucleated cells in the bone marrow are erythroblast, then it is a case of erythroleukemia. It is a cancer, blood cancer of RBG series. In addition to this, in blood, in addition, more than 50 percent nucleated cells in bone marrow as erythroblast, in addition to this, in blood, numerous numerous number nucleated red cells nucleated red cells so we don't get any nucleated cell in blood but in the erythroleukemia numerous number nucleated cell we found and there is more than 50 percent nucleated red cells of bone marrow are erythroblast in case of erythroleukemia now come to m7 now come to M7. It is called megakaryoblastic leukemia. Megakaryoblastic leukemia. The audience, you know, from the megakaryoblast, megakaryocyte comes, and the, from the megakaryocytes, we get platelet from the bone marrow. So, this is the FAB classification where you get leukemia of RBC, leukemia of megakaryocyte. So, this is all about the acute myeloblastic leukemia. Dear students, one thing is important. In this type from M1 to M7, there is leukemia of WBG series, leukemia of monocyte, leukemia of megakaryoblast, leukemia of RBG series. All are under the heading of acute myeloblastic leukemia. So, we can we can say it as acute non lymphoblastic leukemia. If we call it acute non lymphoblastic leukemia instead of acute myeloblastic leukemia, then M1 to M7 is fitted here. Now come to acute lymphoblastic leukemia. In FAB classification, this is all about the acute myeloblastic leukemia. Now come to acute lymphoblastic leukemia in FAB classification. Acute lymphoblastic leukemia. FAB classification. In FEV classification, acute lymphoblastic leukemia is classified as three. 
Number one, L1, acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Here, in this type, or it is homogeneous, it is homogeneous, a small lymphoblastic leukemia, lymphoblastic leukemia. Dear audience, we know there is a small lymphocyte and large lymphocyte. So, there is a small lymphoblast and large lymphoblast. The acute lymphoblastic leukemia where is most of the cells are small lymphoblast, it is called homogeneous a small lymphoblastic leukemia that is L1. Now, come to L3. L3, it is homogeneous, it is also homogeneous, homogeneous large lymphoblastic leukemia. It is homogeneous large lymphoblastic leukemia. So, in this L3 type, we get most of the lymphoblast are large lymphoblast. Now, come to M2, it is heterogeneous. Why it is heterogeneous? In this L2 type acute lymphoblastic leukemia, we get both small lymphoblastic and large lymphoblastic cells. So, both small and large lymphoblast. So, it is called heterogeneous. So, this is all about the FAB classification. Now, come to what are the differences between acute myeloblastic leukemia and acute lymphoblastic leukemia. I have told you here in FAB classification acute myeloblastic leukemia and we can say it acute non lymphoblastic leukemia another is acute lymphoblastic leukemia. So, how can we differentiate between acute myeloblastic leukemia and acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Now, come to differences between differences between acute lymphoblastic leukemia and acute myeloblastic leukemia. First come to age of occurrence, age of occurrence both acute lymphoblastic and myeloblastic leukemia usually occurs in childhood, but acute lymphoblastic leukemia usually under 5 years, usually under 5 years of is common, but AML acute myeloblastic leukemia usually after 5 years of age common. Then lymph adenopathy dear audience I have told you leukemic cell may infiltrate in bone marrow, lymph node, uh, spleen, liver. So, due to infiltration in the lymph node there is lymph adenopathy. This lymph adenopathy is common in acute lymphoblastic leukemia uncommon in acute myeloblastic leukemia. So, it is uncommon in acute myeloblastic leukemia. Number 3 splenomegaly. Splenomegaly is uncommon in acute lymphoblastic leukemia and common in acute myeloblastic leukemia. Then hepatomegaly. Hepatomegaly is uncommon, uncommon in acute lymphoblastic leukemia and common is acute myeloblastic leukemia. Common in acute myeloblastic leukemia. Then come to skin infiltration. Skin infiltration is common in 
acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Here is common. Uh, uncommon in acute myeloblastic leukemia. Then gum hypertrophy. The gum hypertrophy, gum hypertrophy is common in common in ALL. It is common in acute lymphoblastic leukemia and it is uncommon in acute myeloblastic leukemia. Then the immature cells in peripheral blood or in the bone marrow, immature cells, immature cells, in case of acute lymphoblastic leukemia, the immature cells are lymphoblast, immature cells are lymphoblast. But in case of acute myeloblastic leukemia, the immature cells are myeloblast. So dear audience, these are the differences between acute lymphoblastic leukemia and acute myeloblastic leukemia. Now come to how can we differentiate or how can we identify a lymphoblast and a myeloblast. Dear audience, uh, we know in case of acute lymphoblastic leukemia, the predominating cells are the lymphoblast and in case of acute myeloblastic leukemia, the predominating cells are the myeloblast. So we have to differentiate a lymphoblast from myeloblast. Now come to differences between differences between differences between myeloblast and lymphoblast and lymphoblast. First come to size first come to size, size of cell. Dear audience, you know in case of cancer or the cancer cells or malignant cells are always increased in size and larger in size. So leukemic cell that we get in leukemia, this is the cancer cell, it is larger size. Both myeloblast and lymphoblast are larger in size but in comparison myeloblast is a bit larger than the lymphoblast. So size of lymphoblast is larger than myeloblast, lymphoblast. A lymphoblast is a smaller size than myeloblast, but both are large. Then nucleus. Nucleus of myeloblast large and indented, large and indented. But in case of lymphoblast, nucleus is large and round, large and round. So if you consider this is a large cell myeloblast and this is a large cell lymphoblast but smaller than myeloblast, there is large and round nucleus like this. But in case of myeloblast, the nucleus is a bit indented like this. So this is the nucleus of myeloblast like this, indented nucleus. Then number three, cytoplasmic granules, cytoplasmic granules. Cytoplasmic granules may be found in myeloblast, may be found in myeloblast, may be may be found in myeloblast. So in case of myeloblast, we can get cytoplasmic granules, but it is always absent in lymphoblast, absent. Then our body, our body may be present in myeloblast or body may be present in myeloblast, may be present, but it is absent in lymphoblast, absent in lymphoblast. Now come to, these are the granules like the or body like this, or body like this, it is present in, may be present in 
myeloblast but epsilin lymphoblast number 5 number of nucleolus number of nucleolus in case of in case of lymphoblast number of nucleolus is 1 to 2 so in case of lymphoblast number is number is 1 to 2 in number in case of lymphoblast but in case of myeloblast the number of nucleolus is 2 to 5 in number in case of myeloblast so 2 to 5 in number so number of nucleolus in case of myeloblast more than the lymphoblast in case of myeloblast 2 to 5 but in case of lymphoblast 1 to 2 so these are the differences between myeloblast and lymphoblast that we can see under a microscope if we fail to differentiate under a microscope then we have to do myeloperoxidase test to differentiate this to blast cells then myeloperoxidase test myeloperoxidase test why you do this test to differentiate a myeloblast from lymphoblast when you fail to differentiate under a microscope or to become more sure so myeloperoxidase test is myeloblast is positive in myeloperoxidase test so myeloblast is myeloperoxidase positive Milo peroxidase positive so myeloblast is myeloperoxidase positive a lymphoblast is myeloperoxidase negative myeloperoxidase negative so these are the differences between myeloblast and lymphoblast dear audience i have told you in this day one lecture on leukemia definition of leukemia classification of leukemia based on clinical course and prognosis based on cell lineage involvement FEB, classific FEB classification French, America, British classification then I have told you the differences between acute myeloblast leukemia and acute lymphoblast leukemia then I have told you what are the differences between what are the differences between myeloblast and lymphoblast again I have told you more than 50 percent image cell is needed to declare a case of leukemia today up to this thanks all